Today, we answer a question that no one was asking. Does TTA, in the return, have a noble mind? Now, some of you will know what that means, some of you won't. That's okay. It's not very important. But about a bazillion years ago, there was a site called GameFAQs. I do believe it still exists. And they probably still have these votes. But like, you know, 15 years ago, they used to have these votes for your favorite game and your favorite video game characters. And I was somewhat invested in these at the end of middle school and start of high school. I think the voting was pretty terrible. Like, it was the popular characters that, like, were going to be popular on a site like that, right? Uh, st stuff like Halo wasn't that popular, but kind of the RPG and Nintendo worlds were. So you can see the nine characters here. Link was by far the most, uh, the, uh, not by far, but the clear strongest, followed by Cloud, and then Sephiroth, Mario, and in some order, Solid Snake, Samus, Sonic, Mega Man, and Chrono. You'll notice a lot of silent heroes in there, right? Like, it's a me, Mario, doesn't really count. Mario, Samus, Mega Man, Chrono, basically all silent. So not, not actually the most interesting of characters, but these were the characters. And it was an elimination bracket, and the important thing about these nine is they never lost to anyone who was outside of these nine characters. At some point, this was broken. I, I Yeah, whatever. For a while, there was the noble nine, the nine that never lost to anyone else outside of this group. And if any of them were to lose, it would break it. There was no, like, okay, if Chrono loses, we drop to the something eight, you know, the ex excellent eight or whatever. Because if Chrono drops out of the group, well, Chrono once beat, you know, Mario. And Mario once beat Sephiroth, and Sephiroth once beat Cloud, and Cloud once beat Link, and Link has slaughtered all of the others. And there were other ways to do the chain, but the point was, any one of these nine falling, the whole thing falls. But none of the nine had ever lost to anyone outside of the group for some number of voting contests. And eventually, I believe it was broken. Um, as I recall, there was some, like, they switched to, like, a four things are voted on at a time, and two advance, and it was broken in that format, and people were like, does that count? But then I, I think it was broken properly. I don't know. Point is, for a while this stood, and it was a kind of cool group. So I was wondering, in TTA's return, do we have a tournament Noble Nine, just from uh, majors, and specifically open majors, I cut out um, SE Kefka, which was primarily closed, and SE Zidane, which was entirely closed. And the answer, do we have something like this, is no, we don't, and it breaks down immediately. The answer is just no. But we can try to build something sort of like it, and it's not going to be quite as consistent, but it could be interesting. So we can take our three tournament winners. That's where I started. Uh, in order of having one, we have Wizup, Tezuka, and Delial. And we can list who they have lost to in major tournaments in the return. And then we can keep pulling on those threads, right? We can take Piggy Man, Midas... Uh, Turds, Seto, and see, you know, who have they lost to? Like, how far does this go? Is there a point which it stops? And the answer, if we look at those, is we start getting more names. And you can see that if we start, like, you know, looking at each one these people lost to, eventually you get, you know, you get a complete set, because eventually we run out of players. Uh, but that sort of loses the idea, right? No one wants a, you know, special 64, right? So I was thinking, how can we keep it limited? And I think in general, there've kind of been a big six in the return. And that's sort of cheating because I'm starting from a conclusion and then seeing where it goes from there. But we will end up actually adjusting this. Uh, we have the three tournament winners. We have Seto, who's just, you know, Seto. We have Akiyama, and we have Turds, who have been, you know, the two other players consistently at the top of my Players of the Month type things. So I, I took those six, and we can take who have they lost to in primarily open players. And just looking at their losses, there are a few other players to check. I didn't check players like Fish because he didn't play very many events. But, you know, from this we can see, okay... Who have they lost to that is not within this six? And Chickeny's name pops out, Piggy Man's name pops out, Sir Smokes, Yevin, and Midas, right? That's We get five more names. So if you start with these six, we only have to add sort of five more right now. 
Now, we start looking at the next five and we think, okay, Chickeny didn't play too many events. Um, and also there's some other names here. Crescent, Zelder, uh, DJ, we'll come back to him. Uh, Starscream, Vialva, Asala, Addy. So, but we got we got our starting slovenly six. Uh, I decided not to go with a complimentary name. And then, you know, we have some other players potentially to add there. And if we start here, we can also start looking for players who have only lost to people or have almost only lost to people within that group. And three names that really popped out for me were Asala, who has only lost to Wazupseto, Tezuka, and Vid. Um, only lost to tournament winners in the return, other tournament winners, because Asala is a tournament winner. Uh, Blizzard, Deliol, Piggy Man, and Seto. And DJ, Midas Akiyama, Deliol, and Turds. And these three players really feel to me looking at it like... And they've all had good matches with some of the top players. They've had matches where they've been kind of whomped, but they've also had matches that were really tight. Uh, DJ had a great match against Deliol and TTAC, and Deliol was playing incredible in that tournament. Um, Asala had my toughest match in Nephilim, uh, and Blizzard just almost knocked out Seto from TTAC. So they've all had matches where they, they've come close, and they've all had at least an icon result, and two of them have made semifinals. But they, just looking at who they've lost to, these feel to me like players that if the bracket shakes out right, or if they can just happen to get that one signature win, they're going to be going deep and with a really serious chance to win a tournament um, as names of players that, you know, don't have quite the hyper resume as some of the other ones we've talked about. Uh, also, Slash of Time, Vid, and Reaminator, uh, if you look at their results, they kind of look like they are in this group, but they haven't played as many tournaments. And so then we can sort of divide up our groups. And I think if you basically take Akiyama, Deliol, Seto, Tezuka, and was up, uh, these five players have only lost to either each other or players in the next group. And if you wanted to divide this up, you could definitely put Deliol and Seto at the top because they have only lost to players within this group and no players below this group. While everyone else in the group, Akiyama, Tezuka, and was up, have lost to someone from the next group. And then we have, and I'm just doing this in alphabetical order, uh, I, I think that should be a group of five, but if you wanted to put two above, those would be a reasonable two to move above. Um, then you have, so, so the idea of the top group is they only lose to each other or the next group, so far. Uh, obviously this will change, players aren't super consistent forever, and it's small samples. Then we have Chickeny, Midas, Piggy Mancer, Smokes, and Turds, who have win all have wins against the top group. They all are serious threats to the top group, but they've all also lost to players below this group, right? Each, you're kind of, whatever your group is, is you have only lost to players in your group, or in your, uh, in your group, above your group, or one group below, right? And then we have, in our third group, uh, Yevin is kind of inconsistent with some really great wins, but also some, some weaker losses. Well, Asala, Blizzard, and DJ don't yet have the big wins, but also seem like they're the most consistent at beating people below these top groups. Uh, Selder hasn't played many of the majors, but I think also gets a shout out here. Um, there's, yeah, lots of strong players I haven't mentioned in this video, but also I just wanted to focus on a specific theme and see who came up. And so far in tournaments, this is kind of the groupings you get, right? of the first five players only lose to players of those five or the next five so far. Uh, I'm recording this, I should say when I'm recording this, because this might be over by the time, you know, this may have changed. But uh, I'm recording this early on in SEL to Misi around two. So Seto has beaten Turds, but that doesn't change things, right? Turds can lose to Seto, and Seto continues to not have any losses below the very top group. Uh, Akiyama has lost to Tezuka, but again, that fits. That's top group to top group. Um, Deliol is playing Midas. If Midas wins, that still doesn't actually change things. If Deliol wins, then Deliol and Seto will maintain, having only lost to other members of the very top group. And uh, so it's probably going to keep uh, playing out at least a little while, and so hopefully this will still be relatively up-to-date and not seem too different by the time uh, this comes out. And uh, 
think that's that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, but I just thought it was interesting. I like looking at losses. Something I found really interesting back in the day was looking at Jaws' record, and Jaws is a little before my time. But I noticed all of his losses were to like 90th plus percentile players of the era. He just he never dropped games to weaker players. And I, I think his record against the best is not not particularly good, but a remarkably consistent player at beating a weaker opposition. And didn't quite get him to a tournament win, because you have to win, you know, usually a few games against top-level opponents to get that tournament win, and he never quite strung together more than kind of one in a tournament. But he also never dropped games he shouldn't. And uh, that always that always impresses me in a resume. And then you could look at the other end of the spectrum, and there's Diacon Entite, or D, where if you put him here, would firmly be an inconsistent, and would very much ruin any kind of Noble Nine structure, because D's win percentage against the very best is only a tiny bit less than his win percentage against much, much weaker players. And he just has this remarkable, like, he's overall, you know, like 55%, and against the very best, he's like 53%. <laughs> And everyone else is much bigger divides. Like, you take someone like Turds, and against the best, he's maybe around 30%. And against the field, he's over 60%, right? There's there's lots of players with these big splits where, like, you know, they, they can compete with the very best, but they are weaker than them. Um, but when playing weaker players, they, they usually win. And D just wasn't like that at all. So we have him on one end, and we have Jaws on the other, who's just very consistently beat anyone weaker than him, and had some chance to beat better players. Uh, yeah, so maybe this is interesting. Who knows? There you go.